the next iPhone is happening. And if you think what happened with the smartwatch was big, this is infinity times bigger. The key is actually that the morale of the Ukrainian troops is yes. 10 times higher than the Russian troops. They've already figured out and built malaria medicines, antibiotic resistance, plastic waste, um, and then it'll speed up the discovery and creation of new drugs. Hi, everybody. It's uh, Dan Sullivan here, and this is the next episode of Capability Amplifier with the head amplifier himself, the superpower amplifier, Mike Koenigs. Boo! And, and Mike, um, lots of interesting stuff happening every day, real unusual things of humans finding all sorts of ways to amplify their capabilities. So go for it. All right. All right. Good. Well, here's the big moment. It's 2007. Steve Jobs walks on stage and and talks about the iPhone, except he says it's a phone. It's a personal communication device and an, and a music player. It's a phone, a personal communications device and a music player. And that was the moment that propelled Apple into becoming the most valuable company in the world, which I think it's going to have for a long time because now they're a bank, they're, they have their own stores. They're, the medical, they're, so they're the becoming the medical system. They're... It's, it's, it's incredible. Um, everything they do, they do for, for a reason, not without stumbling, but they're brilliant. But here's the most important thing. If you do a little search on Google and search for all of the devices the iPhone replaced, You'll find one, I'll say 101 different devices the, the iPhone replaced. And for example, um, you know, the wristwatch, the pedometer, even though they came out with their own jewelry line, the, the Apple Watch, but the VCR, DVD player, television, um, games like card games, board games, embedding those, the radio, the turntable, the cassette recorder. But, travel agent, travel agents. Yeah, everything that sits on your desk practically. But um, I am here to say, I think the next iPhone is happening. And if you think what happened with the smartwatch was big, this is infinity times bigger. Mm -hmm. And um, it, as, an, as a result, it will be a little terrifying at first, especially if you spend some time going down a couple of rabbit holes that I'm going to share. Um, and it's what AI is doing. So I'm going to just rattle off a couple things and then the destination we'll get to are the industries, the biggest industries by revenue yeah, um, yeah. and how it's going to affect those. Just a little backdrop on the uh, Steve Jobs and the iPhone. Yep. He was totally opposed to the iPhone because he loved the iPod. Yeah. And the convincing argument was his designer said, you have a choice somebody else is going to kill the ipod or you're going to kill the ipod yeah. because it's gone and you'll kill it but you'll have a replacement but if someone else kills it you won't have a replacement and that was the that was the convincing argument and then he made the compelling offer because yeah. uh, he was a you know he was a smart dude that is it comes down to great companies eat their babies you know, they eat their young and that takes a lot of courage. Um, so that, that is a great, great um, setup. So here are uh, a couple AI technologies. And I think the moment that it changed was something called GPT-3. Right now, there are tools, for example, that are GPT-3 that will write copy for you. So they you give it some inputs. And what it does is it goes out to the internet and it grabs gobs and gobs and stuff of stuff. And you say, I want you to write a sales letter to sell an XYZ product in the style of insert famous copywriter here. And it models and emulates that. And at a minimum, it'll seed it and then you can correct it. And then you push the refresh and it'll take your changes and modify that and make it better. Uh, uh, Mike, everybody just went for their pens and pencils or their yep. uh, typing. GP. T-3. It's the latest generation of an AI smart engine that learns, builds big data collections, and you can tell it, 
well, I'm going to take it to the next level. Okay. So a variant of that now is in AI powered art. Tell me the writing one because I'm interested in that. Okay. One. Yeah. So um, there are a whole bunch. One's called copysmith.ai. Copy. AI. Copy. Um, and one yep. word or two words? Copy Smith, one word. Um, yep. AI. Yep. Uh, another one is Jasper. Jasper. Okay. Yep. And some of these are, um, and that's probably kind of the big one. There's another one called Writer. Um, well, I'm not going to. Um, I always keep a smart human between me and technology. So I'm. <laughs> oh, this is. Writer. This, writer. Yep, uh, writer. Another one is Copy AI. Um, and then, um, and now, now they're specializing. So some of them are optimized for, um, poetry. Yeah. Some of them will do. Uh, uh, you, you've given me enough to get into the territory. Oh, yeah. So start with Jasper, start with Jasper. That one has the most stuff. Jasper.ai. Jasper.ai. That's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go down uh, another one. Uh, it was only six weeks ago or so an art competition, a prestigious one was won by someone who submitted some art. And when he uh, won the award, they found out that he used a platform called Midsummer or DALL-E, which are GPT powered and it's AI powered art engines. And what you do is you type in a couple of commands and it will draw something. So I could say, uh, draw a picture of ant-man in space wearing a ballerina ballerina costume in the and it style would, in the style of, of monet andy warhol or totally yes and in about mm, 15 20 seconds boom it's there yeah. now that's that's interesting and it scared the hell out so of you know, a bunch of artists ai m-i-d-s-o-m-m-e-r i'm gonna -M -M -E give you some more M M M E R mid summer as in midsummer's no, night. I'm not uh, not uh, you. That's correct. An O instead of a U. Yes. Okay. Another one is called Dall E. Um, D A L L dash E. Yeah, I like the artist Dall E. Yep. And Dolly, then we've got Dall E yep. dash E. It's D A L L dash E. Dash yep. E. Okay. Yeah, got it's it. kind of like Wally, -E, the yeah, little Disney yeah, movie. Yeah. Then there's another well, one. Called... Anyway, um, yeah. continue. I, I just want to do a little favor to the watchers and listeners here. That, yeah. Uh, and and what I'll do is I'll collect a bunch of links and we'll put them in the show notes. That way, uh, there's a yeah. bigger reason to subscribe and like and and follow us. Um, but then uh, here's what happened with art. This thing has evolved so quickly, and someone. Now, originally, you needed a lot of GPUs, a lot of processing power, and it's all offline in these big neural net things. But some smarty pants created a fork of this code and uh, managed to squeeze all the processing to just feed into a, a graphics card, which, of course, the same graphics card that have been generating your Bitcoin or your, uh, um, your crypto for you. Now you can use it to create art and it's super fast, but it doesn't have the filters on it because at first they turned on the not safe for work um, NSFW filter, which basically eliminated, you, you can't make porn, but now you can create naughty images and it's creating fantasy sex art. But another person created another fork and it's creating videos. So you can give it some commands and say, uh, show me, um, a 25-year-old yeah, uh, kid, yeah, no, uh, yeah, riding yeah, a skateboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm you know, yeah. I'm a 40s guy, you know. I was yeah, born, I was yeah you could, anything you want. I was born you know? with certain rules, you know, of what can be talked about in public here, so. Yes. Yeah. Well, here's what's, what's happening um, is suddenly it's going to destroy the uh, porn market in terms of or because you won't no, be able to just, tell the difference it just creates a new porn it just creates a new porn you know custom for your weird kinks or yeah, whatever yeah. But i mean they'll still need you know i mean um so i've got a rule that the world is heading towards a single model and it's the, the fastest growing industry in the world is is it you know yeah. what you're talking about is it the technology and the um and um but the biggest problem with technology for the most part it doesn't coach itself it doesn't yes. coach itself okay and that's exactly right
It I know where you're going, itself. and the and answer's yes. And what you want, there's two multipliers. There's um, there's IT, technology related to IT, and that's got AI now as part of the engine. And then you have teamwork. For all of human history, the number yep. one multiplier has been human teamwork. And human teams are really great in their multipliers, but they don't naturally think of multiplying themselves with technology. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, you need coaching. You need coaching yep. to do this. So there are people out there who are very excited. They'll download the program, and tomorrow they'll be on to something else because they didn't have any coaching of how they integrate this with how they're making money, what they really want to do. Mm -hmm. And they'll play with it, and they'll... Um, you know, they'll bother their friends with this and, you know, and they'll go to the cannabis store and, you know. And... Yep. yep. So, um, so, so I'm going to just go down that rabbit so hole. I, so so I, I'm, I'm totally, and I see it. And you mentioned the one that we both know about the AI program that can look at all the pharmaceutical, you know, all the drugs. Yes. Uh, and especially the ones that are beyond beyond ip protection you know they're in the public domain and you say i want this drug to do such and such and such and it's either the drug itself or it's a combination of five of them you can now put together to create that and we, i saw the doctor and you you know who the doctor is from i think yep. he's from i think he's from philly uh, philadelphia um, yeah that's exactly right Yep, same yeah. guy. And I, so, I said, go for it. Uh, but doc, the doctor training doesn't teach you how to capitalize on this. Entrepreneur training teaches you how to capitalize this. Yes. And so let's go down that rabbit hole because I think this is the most important thing. I'm going to um, just, again, go through a couple. We're going to build to the destination, but the going there is just as valuable as getting there uh, or being there. So, um, for example, there are... There's a tool, uh, so a big fear right now is deep fakes. I already talked about the porn, but you can create total artificial actors. We're very close to being it being it being indiscernible because pe when people create a deep fake or an artificial or fake person or take like a political figure and make them say something they didn't, um, there's a tool you can get right now. It's super affordable. It's called Descript, D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T. It is an editor that you upload a bunch of audio and you train it and then they'll do a deep fake voice. So let's say we're doing our podcast and we ex I accidentally say orange and I meant to say purple. Well, I can just click on the word because you we in feed the video. It'll recognize the voice, create a trained version of it. I can type in the word purple over the word orange because it also transcribes and it'll use my voice to say purple or yours. But now it's so good that you can record using different cadences. So let's say we did the uh, soft, slow narrative voice or the high speed sales voice for a video sales letter. It can emulate that. And now you can just feed it the script. So we could have virtual Dan speaking. I mean, you literally could create a virtual podcast and you don't even need to be there. Um, but the, the video version of that is right around the corner. And again, uh, the on one hand, you're going to see people's likenesses being knocked off and used for nefarious purposes, mm -hmm. but also uh, actors are going to be licensing their themselves. Now, here's the way it works. What all these have in common is it's a coaching model. So when you're creating creative, you'd give it, hey, I want a sales letter to sell this device in the voice of pick a famous copywriter um for a technical audience and it'll grab a bunch of information and spit something out and then you tweak it you look at it tweak it and then click refresh and it'll write the next version the same mm -hmm. thing happens with artwork so a buddy of mine started creating a whole bunch of fantasy wizardly ethereal <laughs> artwork and he just got really good at giving the ai commands um and then uh the same is true with um uh, there, like another area that's going to be replaced fairly quickly, I believe, is human companionship. So both of my parents are in memory care. My mom can't remember a damn thing. But if you ever did, you see the movie Her by any chance? No, no, it's I actually, know of it, but I didn't. Um, 
it, it's Joaquin Phoenix, and he basically it's like sort of like he goes in. I think his girlfriend or his wife died or something like that. He's lonely. I believe that's the premise, but <clears throat> he gets it's sort of like a single earpiece delivered to him, and the AI produces his girlfriend, um, who becomes his best friend, and they fall in love. And I mean, it, it's so compelling and interesting because, um, you know, if you had a learning thing and she helped you and reminded you of things, you know, you literally had your best friend in your ear all the time. Um, now the, another thing that's very close to happening is, um, you know how Google and Facebook and all the big tech, you are the product, right? You, they give you free yeah, stuff. If it's free, you're the product. Yes. That's the rule. Well, <laughs> well, check this out. Tesla is so damn smart. We've been buying Teslas. We drive them around. They're great cars. And it's got a bunch of cameras in it. And guess what? It has been gathering billions of trips. And it's figured out how people move, um, where they go, where everything is. They've got a complete map of everywhere there's a Tesla and traffic patterns. So that's fed into a gigantic AI. So Tesla's Optimus robot is going to be released very, very soon. And everyone's like, well, robots, you know, it's going to take forever because they have to learn. And so like, now nah, they're just going to dump all that data, hook it up. It's going to be connected with a high speed 5G modem. And these things are going to be smart out of the chute. Okay. Because the problem with robots is they're dumb and they have to learn. And that's the hard stuff. So we're able to mix, mash, match data from all different places and stick them into devices that are going to learn and and think about what that will do for labor or companion labor. I'm going to give you another one just again to kind of stack on top of this mm -hmm. um, military. So Elon was interviewed not that long ago, but America has been known for its big military, our aircraft carriers, our Navy, our Air Force, blah, 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 blah. Irrelevant moving forward in a lot of ways. Yes, it's a show of force, but you could just grab someone's face, create a swarm of 100 dr uh, drones loaded with a small explosive, and it could get through anything and just fly and stick on you and blow up. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so selective, very, very low cost. And of course, the Ukrainian war has been a testing ground for our technology, the Iranians, Israelis. Trying this out, collecting a lot of data. It's just yeah, been it's a beta. The, uh, it's the largest uh, live action weapons trade show in the history of the world. Exactly. So, yeah, transportation yeah. cars. But I will tell you this that mm -hmm. the key is actually that the morale of the Ukrainian troops is yes. 10 times higher than the Russian troops. And most of the weapons they are using are weapons that they got from the Russians 30 years ago, the tanks, the artillery. Yeah. So it, it, it plays a part. It plays a part, but it's very, very targeted. You know, the, 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 there's been a huge shift in the last two weeks, and it's because the U.S. gave the Ukrainians 12 trucks that each have six rockets on it. Mm -hmm. okay? And these, uh, the U.S. has had this for 15, 20 years. But what they do, the, a lot of people don't know this, but flying around at about 50,000 feet, 200 miles outside of the battle zone is an American um, reconnaissance plane. And one of the things they did early in the war is that they blocked, um, they blocked Russia's encryption channel to its high commanders. Yep. So they couldn't use encrypted phones and they all mm -hmm. had to use their personal cell phones. And the U.S. has the numbers of every um, Ma captain, major, colonel, general in Ukraine, and it's got an AI program that just keeps track of the phone numbers. And anytime twenty of them are close together, one of the uh, one of the rockets launches off the trucks. Yeah. Okay. And boom. and they're heavy drinkers. You know, Russians yeah. are heavy drinkers, heavier now, and they get yeah. together in bars or tents or underground bunkers. But the rocket hits them right in. You know, um, they were expecting the next order of drinks and it was a rocket, you know. Pow, right in the kisser. Yeah. 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 So that's very targeted. And uh, the Ukrainians are only using it to decapitate the 
officers because Russian soldiers are trained to take orders, not to change orders. Yeah. And so you take out the senior leadership and, you know, yep. they, cut off their hands. Right. No, they just abandon the, they, they, abandon, you know, a lot of them are just crossing over and going to farmers and saying, you know, I know, you know, you need help because it's an agricultural, it's a big agricultural. So they're just crossing over the lines and saying, you know, I'll come and work for you, you know, and, um, you know, so, so it's yeah. a, it, yeah, but it was it's Monty Python and the Holy Grail run away. But it was yes. the same thing in the desert storm that the mm -hmm. Americans had smart bombs for the first time. So they could put the bombs where they, and, and it wasn't, it was only 10% of the bombs. And the other thing is the Abrams tank doesn't have to see you to kill you. You know, yes. but, you know I mean, they can hit you from nine miles off and uh, because they're using satellite uh, satellite technology. So right. I, I think the, you know, I mean, um, you know, the technological creators make big sweeping statements. No, it's used in a very targeted way and it changes how wars are normally, normally won. So I don't believe any of this. I mean, it's, it's very clear that, uh, that Tesla's and the other EVs are bought by people who have two other cars you know, and they use the EV for status purposes and running around town. But mm -hmm. for the long trips, they use the they they use SUV. You know, the the mm -hmm. gas powered SUV, and it's uh, all of the ownership of EVs can be found in twenty percent of uh, postal codes in the United States. The other eighty percent don't have a driveway. They don't have a garage. They you know, but there's a wealthy group. Uh, you know, I mean. Uh, all our coach clients probably live in areas where EVs could be, but the trouble is it's a thousand pounds of stuff that powers it. And you have to dig up 500,000 pounds of stuff in very dangerous places in the world using child labor to get the stuff to create the battery. Yeah. So, well, so every, every yeah. EV driver is a baby killer. Is that what you're saying, Dan? No, no, I'm just saying I, that, I uh, that um, you can make a convincing argument, but so far EVs are not a compelling offer. And the biggest problem, who's liable if you kill somebody in your EV? Mm -hmm. And the EV is driving, but you're responsible, who's liable? And the insurance companies don't want to be liable. The manufacturers don't want to be liable. And the individual doesn't want to be liable. Okay, the only ones who want liability are the law firms. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, so there's other issues that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, there was a lot yeah. of history to the environment in which you're introducing a new technology. And and here's what my response when I listen to that, I'm like, well, how can I solve that problem and I make it go away or profit from it? Right. And where I go to. <clears throat> so I'm going to use an example here, which is uh, I'll go down the 10 biggest industries by revenue in the United States. And, uh, but I'm going to tackle that last one first as a little example. Um, cause what I would do is I would feed a whole bunch of data into a machine learning AI thing and try to find a way to create a transaction based or a use based model. So for example, um, they're talking about turning car insurance into an app. And then when you go somewhere, you basically say, turn on my car insurance. And it looks at all of your risks and what you're driving and when you're driving. And it effectively issues you a policy. It's like when you get a Mexican driving policy. Um, so it's going to be the Uberizing of insurance. Um, and someone will break the insurance model, which is a massive industry. But I'm going to use medical as, as uh, one. So there's a technology firm called DeepMind that um, grabbed all sorts of data. And one of the hardest things, and I don't really understand all the whys behind this, but protein folding. So proteins are the building block of life. Yes. And, um, and DeepMind crunched and figured out how basically um, all proteins are structured um, which was an impossible calculation for humans to make in a period of 18 months, mathematicians, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the bottom line is um, with that, 
They've already figured out and built malaria medicines, antibiotic resistance, plastic waste, um, and then it'll speed up the discovery and creation of new drugs. And um, in a recent interview that Ray Kurzweil said, is he says, just with what they learned when they created the vaccines, now they can create and test a vaccine in two days. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which scares the hell because a lot of people are like, how is it possible that they created a vaccine in under a year? Well, they actually did it in a few weeks. Um, that was the truth. And um, the prediction modeling that this does is phenomenal. So, so our, the number one biggest industry by revenue in the United States is drug, cosmetic, and toiletry wholesaling, um, which already, you know, Amazon has become the biggest juggernaut for shipping um and logistics and that's what ai is going to continue to do it's sort of like how do you get stuff to you faster but also the fact that most of us are going to have a replicator in not too much time where you press a button there's a beverage replicator i can't remember the name of it it's basically a pod and it's like a uh you know the the coffee pods you get mm -hmm. um it's just like that where you buy a subscription and this thing will make you alcohol drinks, any kind of a drink with the push of a button mm -hmm. by mixing a couple of chemicals together that apparently tastes like the real thing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a subscription based. Okay. So you get components and you pay a dollar to three bucks a drink. Um, uh, but in, here, this is, this blows me away. The first three drugs, cosmetics and whole uh, and toiletry wholesaling, then pharmaceutical wholesaling and the new car dealers. Um, so I can't right off the top of my head say, here's exactly how AI is gonna affect that. Um, but the biggest money um, is gonna come from managing information, knowledge, and communications, all of which AI can simplify dramatically. But um, I'm gonna stop yapping for a second and just get your, um, your take uh, well i think after... i think the technology coaching teamwork is the you know that you have to put the three things together that you've got a new technology and mm -hmm. you've got teams and there has to be uh, uh, and it won't be a, a uh, it won't be a, an autonomous coach it'll be a human coach because uh humans are good really really good at very very um illogical questions and very, very illogical ob ob observations. Um, you know, we have logic as a tool, but we're not. Our brains are not logical. Our brains are associative. And um, you think of something, and as it relates to something you read somewhere, and you put the two together. I mean, you're making all sorts of connections here that you didn't read. Uh, that you didn't read. You just put put them together. It's like my six Ds. I've just read a lot of stuff and I put it together. I've got one sixties and then I put the two. No, uh, computers can't do that. They, mm -hmm. they just, and the reason is computers don't have purposes. You know, uh, yeah. you know, humans don't have technological goals. Humans have human goals and they use the technologies that become available to achieve their human goals. Okay. And, yes. um, and the other thing is the, the, is it real or is it artificial? Uh, you know, takes on a really big difference. I went by an artificial diamond that's somebody says it's as good as an actual diamond. I said, I went by it. Uh, I mm -hmm. want a, I want a blockchain proof that this was mined in a certain place mm -hmm. and the blockchain went through. I went drink a wine that tastes as good as the real thing from for from um, France. You know, I'd want, I'd buy the real thing. Now that's, that's strictly me. I'm not saying yep. it's other other people, but I think that originality is going to become a very, very high premium in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, uh, uh, everything. So humans have been dealing with tools for 40, you know, 200,000 years, and we get excited about them for a while, and then they just become part of what we're doing. So I think all this is happening. But the other thing is the consumers aren't there to consume them. Yeah. Yeah, there. Well, which <clears throat> leads me to a couple things based on what you just talked about. Um, I think there will always be a premium for originality, novelty, and experiences. Okay, the 
um, what I would propose, and this is a big eye opener for me. It's when my son was driving age um, for you and me having a driver's license meant freedom. OK, get out of the house, go out, be free and independent. And <clears throat> there's a whole generation now that has Uber and Lyft. And you wouldn't believe the percentage. I'd say about half of Zach's graduating class and he's 20 now didn't have a driver's license until they graduated high school. It just wasn't important to them because mm -hmm. their whole life lived inside their phone, their companionship, the relationship. And if you go into a, a room with four or six or eight young people, every one of them are on their phone and they might be talking, texting the person next to them, but they're doing it in a group arrangement with people who could be anywhere in the world. Yeah. Um, but it's weird because they just don't talk. You know, if you have a kid, sending them a text message, they don't get back to you. They don't even respond and say, I received this. You can't tell that they read it or received it because it's just like their whole So you haven't communicated. You actually haven't communicated. Uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's you know, you've only communicated if you get a response. Yes, that's our way of thinking about it. But in their world, their their communications are done through platforms. So they talk through Snapchat or Instagram or whatever the, or Discord or something like that. Some of it is, it's different, it's unique and it controls, they they don't approve their parents. Like I still can't communicate with my kid on some of the platforms. It's private. He doesn't want us to see his friends. Yeah. Um, that's at 20 and he's not one of the weird ones. Um, so that's the first one. Hey, action taker. Mike Koenig's here, and I just wanted to interrupt for a second and let you know that if you're ready to reinvent yourself and your business, go to connecttomike.com to learn more and book a conversation with me right now. All right, back to the episode. The yeah. next one, and I think this is the most important, if I had one giant takeaway, what AI represents is augmentation. So to invent and to create in the future, both the now future and the very near future, you won't need to know science, math, or have specific specialized knowledges to create massive change because you could have an idea and say, I, I want to make, I want to solve and do a little bit of research. And then um, depending on the category, there will be a specialized AI and you just build a simulation that you can test and um, like, um, Urban planning, for example, um, uh, architecture. Uh, you can start with, I want something that looks like this, and it will figure out the best materials based upon where you are at the lowest cost and who would build that for you and where all the pipes and electrical systems should be located based upon the climate. Um, so things that even get missed by the greatest specialists won't get missed by the AIs. So, mm -hmm. um, and a negative side of this, and my son's very concerned right now because there's new um, street drugs that, um, you know, the way the street drug people stay ahead of the law is they just create a variant of the drug that isn't illegal yet as soon as something's illegal. Um, and some of the latest synthetic opiates are Narcan resistant. There is yeah. no way to pull someone out of a coma and they're killing a lot of kids. And he's well, like, this kind of, uh, this is like the coyotes death. Um, you know, I, I mean, for, first of all, um, um, you know, uh, so the kid's got all these technological advantages, but he's just killed his brain. So that yeah. just wipes out all the advantages in one fell swoop. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think that, you know, I, I'm a great believer in, um, you know, Moore's law about mm -hmm. the, microchip i'm also a great believer in uh, in newton's third law uh, which is for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction so uh, uh, elon musk is an action and then there's a counteraction there's a counter yep. counteraction against i mean or what what he creates and what he what he what he predicts and uh but if evs are so good why do they have to be subsidized and mandated by government shouldn't it be obvious that everybody should have an ev yeah, yeah. and that that now you're get, getting into a real problem because it happened you know there's a lot of therapeutic drugs that would have been good for trauma therapy that were invented in the 1960s lsd is one of them and everything else 
but the uh, they became politicized and EVs have become politicized. It's a left wing car. It's mm -hmm. a left wing car right now. And the direction of the country isn't left wing. The country, you know, because the you know, people think when New Yorkers move to Florida that they vote like New Yorkers. They don't. They begin to vote like for Florida. So there's politics in here and there's regulations in here and everything else so is it all happening i believe it's all happening but yep. there 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 are reactions that they don't take into account so so i'm not i i'm a complete believer and i'm gonna i mean the stuff related to writing that's useful to me i'm i'm gonna look it up if we can do it but i have to tell you it may be there and ready to use but in the scheme of things with what other people are doing in my company and I'm busy, it'll take us a while to make it useful for us. Yes. Yes. And I think the, um, it, and it if all everybody comes else to, can do it, then it's a commodity. Yeah. The, the distinction is it's where, you know, one thing that I think is, uh, is going to be hard to replicate is like, for example, part of Dan Sullivan's magic is he is collaborating with a lot of people all the time testing his ideas as you say on check writers um you know because someone's opinion doesn't matter unless they've got skin in the game that's my strong belief and opinion um and then for ai like i think it would be you uh, useful and interesting to you but what the ai doesn't do at this moment is it can create content chunks that are super valuable and interesting and augment the creative writing process, mm -hmm. but someone has to edit it and put it together. Well, uh, and, the, there's a contextual overview. I mean, yes. Yeah. yeah. And yep. I mean, you, you hire writers, I hire writers. Mm -hmm. And if they get 80% right in relationship to the context, I'm really happy. Yes. And I don't think a machine's going to do too much better because it's an interactive thing and you have to have experience. And you, you know, I was a speech writer and uh, I got to the point where I really could hear the person's voice while there. But it took three or four years, you know, to develop yeah. that ability. The problem is that everybody wants to commoditize these. They only pay off if you commoditize them right off the bat. And if everybody's using it, then the advantage of any person is negated by the fact that everybody else has got this available. It's like yeah. Boris Spassky, I saw a really uh, interesting interview and he was the first uh, grandmaster uh, world champion who was defeated by Deep Blue, the IBM computer. And um, the, the person said, so what do chess players do now and he says oh we uh, all the really skillful chess players have just moved up a notch so it's now a competition between a grandmaster with his ai program and other grandmasters with ai program and the same skill differential uh, differential between the human beings is just the same the, mm -hmm. the humans just move the game up one notch when they get a new tool everybody's got the same tool it still comes down to Tom Brady with an exoskeleton would still be better than all the other quarterbacks with an exoskeleton. Yeah. And so there's <laughs> Mike, two Mike Kagan with all every human, uh, every technological capability in the world would still be superior at what he does against everybody else who's got the same technological capabilities. Right. And um, there's two, two important but non-obvious uh, uh, ideas here uh the first of which is so let's say you get that tool and you want to take advantage of it what a, a really smart organization does and i'm going to just use a really simple one if you have a shopping cart program or a crm in your business well hubspot and salesforce really really understands it's buying customers now and um you know, they they sell you crack at first. They give you something that you can use for free, try it out, and you see an improvement. But suddenly, their fees are so big that they're sucking out the difference, a significant significant part of your incremental revenue that you gained and then make you a dependent, and it's impossible to leave, right? You're an addict. 
And um, that's the problem with commoditizing these tools as quickly as they do. Yeah. Um, and then uh, on the flip side, I'll tell you what the AIs do right now that makes up for um, some of the, the challenges that you brought up, which is if I am writing with it, so I'm writing a sales letter or a, a piece of copy, or now I've got some really good tools that just you type in the intent of a email and um, it will write the whole email for you. Okay. It's sort of like who it's, what it's for, who it's to, and it adds all the niceties and you type in the tone of the message. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but what Jasper.ai and some of these other ones do is you give it an instruction and it'll write five different blocks. And then you pick the one you like, you modify it, and then you tell it to spin it and it'll write it again. Yeah. So, it's more like a a, a, a companion. Yeah. And I think well, I think it's a, it's an assistant. It's an assistant. Yes. And yep. it's a fast assistant. You know, and where I saw it, you know, in the you know, of all the technologies that Peter talks about at um at um, Abundance 360, and this goes back uh, uh, 10 full years with the major, and then we had a test run about so it's been been about 11 years. There's mm -hmm. only two that have exceeded the predictions that he was making, and none of the others have exceeded the predictions. They've lagged the predictions. The only two are AI and medicine. Those are the only two where I see there's been a, we're a lot further ahead in 2022 than was being predicted in 2012. And the reason is that uh, AI, uh, does the lab work 10,000 times faster than a human can do the lab work. Okay, the vaccine in three days. But you still have the problem that the vaccine may have all sorts of negative consequences, mm -hmm. consequences that, uh, you know, that uh, they didn't anticipate with the ones that they brought out over the last two, two or three years. But there's a lot of suppressed information about really bad reactions to the vaccines that they don't want you to know. And I can't see how an AI tested and developed uh, vaccine is going to solve the problem that the human brain and the human body is just infinitely cap uh, more more complex than um, you know than uh, any designer of an a, pro a program can possibly take into consideration. Yeah, and and my response to that is, and this is why uh, they talk about the, and again, let's take the religious context out of this, the singularity. What's happening rapidly is lots and lots of blobs of data that may be seemingly unrelated are being combined and, and mashed up right now. And... Um, you know, you're grabbing data from all different sources. And when it's plugged together, now the AI can traverse that and simulate it. So simulating a full human, at least a, a vaccine on, if you've been DNA sequenced, it will be able to predict and look at the effects. Now, I don't know to what degree of, of accuracy, but I, I would suspect it's pretty darn high. And there are so many... Um, data sets available and assuming they can do anonymous aggregate of that, meaning you go to mm -hmm. and, and rent big pools of this data, you'll be able to simulate a huge percentage of society. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm going to take one disparate concept, but related. So Meta just a week or two ago came up with a way of you'd have a little um, non-invasive skull cap you'd put on your head and it could pre predict what you were hearing with 72% accuracy by listening to your brain waves and using predictive algorithms. And it's because AI is getting really good at context. It knows the context of what's going on. So it'll know what you're thinking about and interpret that. Um, and, and what this means is um, where Neuralink is invasive, they're actually putting little um, uh, sampler wires inside your brain that listen to and pay attention to certain signals. Mm -hmm. um, what AI can do is predict, and it can do that on the basis of trillions of data points. And like I said, I think what will invariably happen 
um, is, you know, like the universe is a fractal. When you, when you look up into space, you see fractals. And when you look down through a microscope, you see fractals. I think we're going to no, start. I, I, we don't. We don't. No, I disagree. I, I don't oh, really? think that's the way. That, that, that what we see. We take in some new information and our brain uh, memories supplies the rest of the picture. When we're okay. seeing things, we're only picking up 10% of what's there and our brain supplies the other 90%. And the reason is the human brain operating at full thinking ability only uses 150 watts of electricity uh, uh, an hour. We're, we're, the total for to run our efficient. system, think about things, is like 150. The sheer amount of energy that's needed for these AI programs, you, you're going to have to need nuclear reactors to, okay. to do them. When one of these programs can do what the human brain does with 150 watts, then we're talking about a breakthrough. Okay. I, I'm, yeah. just say, I'm just saying that the energy cost for this is through the roof. They don't have the energy to supply the technology. You put in a new, they're putting in a new chip factory north of Phoenix. It's, t, uh, it's t, uh, uh, t, you know, it's the, it's the, um, Taiwan company that's the yep. number one creator and mm -hmm. it's going to have 30,000 people. The Arizona yeah. electrical grid can't handle that right now that, that those 30,000 right. new th uh, new people, you know. Uh, yeah, and you no know, server farms, server farms. Mm -hmm. You're going to come to a point where the energy, especially with one party trying to cut down the main source of uh, source of energy. Yeah, and it's funny because the same party that the technology people mostly belong to, or at least they say they belong to, one part of their party is working against their future. So they got right, to solve right. this inside. So I, I'm just looking at, because I'm used to looking at things politically and from a mm -hmm. very standpoint, and it's friction. There's just enormous friction. And the other thing is that I, uh, computers only get smart, uh, uh, smarter than human beings uh, when human beings dumb down to be dumber than computers, mm. okay? Okay. And I see young people getting dumber than computers now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I they're uh, supplementing it with chemicals, they're getting even dumber. So mm -hmm. I think it takes smart human beings. I mean, uh, you know, um, what I notice is if I look at 18 year olds when I was 18, we look about five years older than the 18 year olds right now. Yeah. Because we're prepared. In my day, we were preparing to be adults. Today, children don't even know what an adult is. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, a lot of adults today are trying to become children. Yeah, that's in <laughs> that's interesting. I yeah, um, yeah. I but get what you're saying, Mike. Yeah. I just want to tell you, I believe that all this stuff is going to happen, but it only happen as a result of smart entrepreneurs taking it and applying it to this. And yeah. uh, if I have 10 people creating the instructions for copy in that room. And Mike Koenix is one of them. The other nine don't have a chance with their mm. new technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying I would always bet on you yeah. with a new technology against anyone else with a new technology. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think there's unquestionably that is the... Um, you know, if 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 someone said, "How can I prepare myself for the future and be super valuable and increase my capabilities?" It's like learn well, how to I would manage. Talk to my, I would say, go and see if you can, uh, in some way through your contacts, get, uh, spend some time with Mike Kanix or Joe yeah. Polish or yeah. Dean Jackson or <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, you know others. But I said, I I think that the uh, the center of the game is always smart humans. Yes. Unquestionably that know how to leverage and use technology to create a multiplier effect. Right. And that's, uh, yeah. it's, it, I, I, what I like about your thinking is first principles. And I am not, I have not engineered my brain to think through a political lens. Um, so when I hear, uh, your perspective, I'm like, damn, I didn't even go down that, that, that path. You know, I'm, I go down the market path and, um, I'll leave you with one big idea, which may or may not tie this whole thing together. But I was talking to a really smart friend of mine who runs a couple software companies. 
and we were talking about naming a business. And he said, the most expensive thing you can do in a marketplace is try to reframe an audience. So if someone <laughs> hears one thing and it means something to it, doesn't matter what you do, it'll cost you a fortune to reframe it. So, you know, and, and that is how quickly does someone understand why this is relevant to them is, is uh, a big, big barrier. And it, when you look at politics, at least charged politics, one word can set someone off. You know, that's the danger of the social media world we live in when there's so many triggers. There's incredible landmines, you know, what would call the woke movement is just a minefield of triggers that didn't exist before. And now we're used it's, to have and it's yeah. uh, com completely emotional attachment to an idea that's not even a, a true idea. I mean, yes. You know, and, uh, you know, so, yeah. So I think there's just a lot. Uh, one, uh, uh, Stephen Palter, who's in mm -hmm. free zone, and he's, you know, I think probably rated in the top five IVF doctors in the world. And I was asking about CRISPR, uh, CRISPR technology, where they can engineer the uh, genes. They can go in and they can engineer the genes. And mm -hmm. he says, yeah, it's really interesting. They can do what they intend to do, but then there's 10 unintentional consequences that happen in the body in other genes, and we have no comprehension how that happened. Yeah. And he said, this was true 20 years ago. It was true a year ago. It'll be true 10 years from now. Uh, it's just infinitely more complex than you think it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, and I talked to him about it and I said, well, how do you keep your morale up when you know that's true? And you say it's you want to be as smart and up to date as you possibly can so you can be useful to specific patients and human beings. And um, it's never going to be any different than that. Yeah. Yes, really. That's really powerful thinking. Well, let's. um. Anyway, Let's, but it was great, and uh, I'm. You've given me a lot to. Um, I'm, I'm. But I would never use the Jasper to create the messages outside. I would create uh, uh, something that uh, kind of writes like I do, mm -hmm. and then I would have it talk to me so I can see what I, uh, what I actually said. You know, like. Uh, you know, I wrote it down and then mm -hmm. it talked back to me. I'd like to do it. But my problem is I don't want the company that has this software to have my thinking. Yeah. So the way that's working right now, for example, and, and at this moment, there isn't anything quite like you're describing unless you glue a couple apps together. So um, there are different writing tools and I'll do a little more research because yeah. there's some that are writing novels. There's some that are poetry. Some of them are song lyrics. You know, there's. AI generators for composing music now that are actually getting pretty good. Um, yeah. I heard yeah. one doing a Jimi Hendrix knockoff the other day, and it was pretty close. I mean, totally synth based guitars, even the voice. It was white, really weird. But Descript is the deep fake voice synthesizer that samples you, and then you can feed it a script. And it does the cadence right. I mean, it really sounds good. Yeah, and no, then... I've heard, I've uh, I've come across a couple of them on um, on the internet, and mm -hmm. uh, but they couldn't do the they couldn't do you, but the voice, you know, the voice that they give you, they give you a choice of thirty different voices, different yeah. cadences, and everything. And mm -hmm. there, there was one that really sounded good, and the inflections were good, and everything like that. But my sense is that we're so geared to um the issue of trust that if we'll get fooled and then we'll develop a greater sensitivity we'll develop yep. a greater sense you know i think you know it's like being uh, uh, all the people who grew up during in israel um as children during mm -hmm. the violence the the worst violence were bah cafes were exploding they said they just have superpowers of picking up a stranger walking down the street, how they're walking and everything like that, they they can just tell this is trouble coming, you know, the guards yeah. at the frontier and everything like that. Our brain develops to meet the challenge. Okay. And if if getting fooled by technology is the challenge, 
our brains will jump to another level. You mm -hmm. know? Not everybody's. I mean, certain people will, you know, but we'll get a good at this. Yeah, but yes. uh, no, I mean, I find it fascinating and I think it's all going to happen. And we live in a wonderful world where this kind of stuff. But I tell you, I trust I trust the I trust the technology a lot more than I trust the people behind the technology. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's um, I don't level... trust Mark Zuckerberg with anything. No, he I I, I am convinced he's an evil alien. And yeah, no, um, he's not. He's a he's an evil human being, you know, yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, he comes across as weird because that's what evil does to mm -hmm. the human human being. You know, I mean, he's creating the metaverse because he's trying to create some place where he can't be delivered with a subpoena. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. You know, it, I, that's brilliant. It, um, really, really, yeah. How fascinating is that? Well, if you think uh, damage has been done to our children in through the uh, uh, social media universe, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 uh, I predict there will be a considerable backlash against this already uh again i i measure certain things through my son but he sees an interesting lens he is terrified of ai right now because he's gone down the rabbit hole he's researched this and he sees the movement and the speed and um and he is watching the effects of what uh drugs and social media are doing to his generation he's like the you know he's right now he was just going on about how the internet is a bad place um you know yeah. he went that far and and i i suspect we're about to see a massive pendulum well and i think with... it's a generational thing you know uh yeah totally because, uh generations don't repeat themselves if you have one generation that goes for it the other ge next generation differentiates themselves totally from you know, and you can mm -hmm. see that with the boomers. But the other thing is an artificial construct generations, you know, it's 18 years. Do you think the person in the first year of the generation has anything in common with the person in the 18th year of the gen? The, the, you know, I, I mean, I'm two years before the boomers. Okay. And I'm part of the generation that started in the 1920s. But I have nothing in common with people who were born in 1928, 29, 30, you know, you know, I was born in 44 and, you know, and, uh, but there's a significant difference between uh, how I was treated than the boomer generation, because my life's just been all abundance. There was always more uh, yep. educational resources because we were a small, gen we were the smallest generation. The, we were the first generation that was smaller than the generation before. Mm -hmm. The job market, you got to, you get a job, you know, you, I don't like this job. I'm going to get another job and there's yeah. another job, job and the boomers, it was just pure competition. I mean, they, mm -hmm. there wasn't enough of anything. There was too many of them and not enough of anything. So they're fiercely competitive, but the, the ones who were born in the forties, uh, had a lot better than the people born in the sixties, you know? So anyway, but you know, Humanity is infinitely bigger than anything that humanity creates. I mm. told Ray Kurzweil that the first time I heard him speak. Mm. I said, uh, it's an interesting thing that you're doing here, but I want you to know that humanity is always infinitely bigger than anything that humanity creates. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's, that's a big, big idea. Yeah. Um, especially to, to Ray, because I have enough of Ray living in my brain. I kind of know how he thinks and talks right now. I listen, I've read his stuff and, uh, um, he, he definitely, he's a fascinating guy. And then you can certainly see there are times when he gets certain kinds of information and the does not compute light, uh, flashes. Um, well, the biggest thing he's got good parents and that's the most important thing. That's, I mean, my life, you know, I mean, I, I just lucked out. I just said mm -hmm. they weren't, they weren't perfect parents for my siblings, but they were perfect parents for me. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. How lucky you are. That is, that is uh, quite the gift. That's yeah. the, that's the uh, lucky cosmic dice roll.
So how would you like to wrap this up? Any last um, observations? Yeah, well, I think, first of all, you know, from my standpoint, if I'm a listener to this, uh, it's things to pay attention to, you know, and, you know, I would develop, uh, you know, there's all sorts of neat, um, you know, um, note downloads on your computer. Your computer is really great that anything that where you see AI involved just... uh, copy the article and drop it in the file. And then, uh, you know, uh, and if you read 10 articles and YouTube is just a treasury for this. I mean, yes. uh, You know, uh, you know, I mean, on any topic, there'll be five YouTubes that if you watch all five of them, uh, you're smarter than 99% of other human beings on the topic, you know, so that, you know, yeah. So that's what I would do is just pay attention to it, you know. If it was 1890 and people were talking about electricity, uh, just learn everything you can about electricity. It's going to be a big deal, you know, and hardly anybody's using it and everything. You're going to be ahead of the game if you know something, you know, and um, yep. and, um, you know, uh, it doesn't matter. You, you don't have to be, uh, you know, you don't have to be any smarter than the um, 10 people who might compete with you. Mm hmm. Right. Right. And if I think whoever understands and uses these AI tools as augmentation, yeah, it puts you way ahead of anyone else. And I uh, grabbed a reference that I'm going to put. Uh, I already put in our show notes and um, it's called AI gets out of control, refuses to back down with Elon Musk. But it, it's um. It's an interesting video where you'll get exposed to a lot of developments in AI and see some of the names, you'll see the artwork, you'll see some of the tools and some of the thinking behind this. And I completely agree with you. I think right now the fastest con- concentration of good information is is on YouTube. Um, and then I also recommend if you like this level of thinking it, but in even more detail the lex friedman podcast is exceptional i think he's lex probably l e x f r i d m a n yeah he's an mit ai researcher who does a lot with um autonomous vehicles and uh image recognition and um neural nets it's yeah. machine thinking yeah um but he is very philosophical and what's great about his interviewing style He's very, very well prepared. He dresses like a men in black character, black tie and a black jacket and a white shirt. He's funny. Um, He's got a buzz cut. He's got the consistent look thing going on, but he's got access to remarkable people and scientists. So he had a a former CIA or a KGB spy um, who defected. and on and and you learn a lot about psychology, but it's the way he asks questions that I really enjoy. But when it yeah. comes to the AI stuff, he's in the field. He knows it. He knows who the players are and how to ask great questions mm-hmm. and make it, uh, um, you know, um, make it meaningful yeah. to to you. So anyway, um, this is I spend a lot of time in this space right now because I'm looking at. Well, you got per, you got a personal reason too. Yeah, I mean, that's why I notice about medical science is that the speakers on stage on the longevity trip uh, are infinitely more humane than the speakers on the A three sixty stage. Okay, because yes. one of the yeah. things I notice about a lot of the speakers on the A three sixty, which is about all other kinds of technology. Yeah, is that they're really smart, but a lot of them are kind of pricks. You know, you can uh-huh. tell right off the bat they're pricks. I've never come across one of the ones in, involved in medical technology that you wow. couldn't tell that there was a deeply human reason why this mm. person was so interested in this. And I trust that a lot more. I trust uh, humane intelligence a lot, a uh, lot, a uh, lot more than I trust uh genius level and but it's all intellectual intellectual Mm. intelligence Mm. Mm. yeah i could see yeah and it's very very interesting peter uh peter diamandis is incredibly more available in the medical science than he is when he's when he's on stage with the other people yeah 
Well, when you've got a personal interest in the old survival business, right? Staying young. Yeah, we're all that, interested. That's a big helper. In, we're all yeah. interested in the topic, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So anyway. Good. Yeah, let's wrap this one up. Um, um you so do the you, you I'll do the close. All, you know where all the plugs go at the end of the podcast. So plug them Bippity in. Boppity boo. All right. Well, this is another episode of Capability Amplifier. I don't know if you noticed, but Dan and I really enjoyed this conversation. This is super interesting. Um, make sure you go through some of our back catalog if you've liked this and you're new to the podcast. And if you can think of anyone in your life who could benefit from hearing this or is interested in it, share the episode. And then, of course, like, comment, share, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye.